everybody! Welcome to Pale in Comparison. In this podcast, my sister uses her knowledge of the otherverse to take a look at Pact, Wildbo's least appreciated work, and I try to not give away any spoilers. I'm Jenny, and Malia convinced me to read Worm. I'm Malia, and Jenny convinced me to read everything else. This episode, we are covering Gathered Pages 1. Before we get into that, however, I'd like to issue a spoiler warning. This podcast is filled with pale spoilers. If you don't know what Lucy's implement is and don't want us to tell you, stop now, read Pale, and come back to this podcast. As for Pact, there will be full spoilers through the chapter we are covering. Yeah, this is our first interlude, which is pretty exciting. Mm -hmm. Um, So we're basically, I'm going to go over pretty much the laziest (laughs) chapter summary that I've done so far. I'm not going to lie. And then we're kind of just going to jump right into it instead of me summarizing each section Um, We're just going to kind of jump in and see how it goes organically. All right. It's going to be super sweet. Um, Any thoughts before we get started, Malia? Uh, This was great. Uh, I'm, it was kind of a fun blend of a pale extra material and like an interlude because it's a diary. Really excited to like learn more Mm. about Grandma Rose. I didn't think about that as a blend of an extra material, but I guess that's a good point actually. Um, Yeah. It just sort of came to me. This is is really enjoyable to read, for sure. It Mm -hmm. was nice getting to go back over it again. All right, my really lazy summary is we get to read Grandma Rose's diary, which gives us some major insight into her life. It's accurate. There you go. (laughs) It's, I mean, pretty, I mean, yeah, it's super accurate, guys. (laughs) I mean, how much better can you get to summarize stuff than that? (laughs) Probably a lot better, but, (laughs) I mean, this is our podcast, so... We do what we want. Um, but anyway. Yeah, so we basically start, uh, let me see. So this first entry is February 6th, 1931. I think she was about eight. That's the guess. Seven or eight. Yeah. Um, that's our guess. Honestly, I felt like she sounded a little bit younger, but then again, I haven't hung out with a lot of eight-year-olds in a Recently, while. Recently, yeah. Um, that very well could be accurate, especially like... I don't know, depending on how she was raised, mm-hmm. if she, like, I don't know, might have been a little bit more innocent in certain ways or a little bit more, I mean, kind of, maybe not, maybe that's not the right word to use, <laughs> or sheltered. She wasn't very sheltered, was she? Well, the first line was interesting, the whole, like, disclaimer bit. It felt really legal, but when I first read it, I was like, what are you talking about? Like, why would this be necessary? Because, like, <sighs> It just didn't feel like it would do anything if she, like, wrote down a lie or whatever. Um, and I liked that she kind of confirmed later, like, yeah, I'm pretty, like, this doesn't do anything. Because I thought, like, that it was really weird. I also thought it was really endearing how she goes in and is like, dear diary, I don't know why I'm saying that, but, like, you're my diary and daddy told me I had to. And, like, it was really cute and uh, set this up to be a very heartbreaking interlude, which Oh, I it know. Is. <laughs> like... I mean, I know I said before, maybe innocence isn't the right word, but she does. I mean, I don't know. She honestly does come across as like an innocent little girl Mm -hmm. um, that kind of gets like. It's a very stark contrast to what we see of her later on, Mm -hmm. obviously. But it's like, obviously, she's the sweet little girl. She doesn't really know better for a lot of things. She is pretty innocent. She's a little she's a little kid. Right. So. Yeah. And I. I was just kind of thrown by all of this stuff happening. I didn't expect her dad to be like the head of the family. Like I, I, I thought this was like a matrilineal thing with like the demons and stuff. And it might be, but it also seems like her dad does stuff with demons. I just like was kind of surprised that he was like the one who was always around and the one who, I mean, they're, they're, it seems like they're both, or they're def- definitely both practitioners, I I was surprised by that. I was also surprised and even like more sad to realize like this is the father that she spoke so highly of to Blake mm. and he's the person who like abused her. Practitioner families, I guess like suck. Yeah. But it was really it, w- it wasn't what I expected. Although it seems like she's an only child which is s- sort of what I expected. I don't know why, but it just seems like a really lonely 
sad childhood. I'm just curious. I mean, did your thought of like her dad being like the head of the family and all that, like, did that change your ring through? Or are you saying like just as a whole? Because I have a slightly different read potentially. I guess head of the family like isn't exactly the right way to put it. I guess it's just like, because I guess in a way, yeah, like the mom and dad's like gender roles are flipped in this Mm -hmm. family where the dad is staying home and taking care of the child and the mom is off like for work. Um, And the mom is the one Mm -hmm. that's like much scarier, which is horrifying after what her dad does to her. So I guess maybe her mom is more like the head of the family, but I guess like I wasn't even sure if the women in this family were like marrying practitioners. And so I I was, I was surprised Mm -hmm. that that was the case, I guess. Okay. That makes sense. The, the whole story about Pearl Duchamp was so sad. Just like trying to make a friend and having it like spit in her face was just such a like, bullied child classic story but then also it's like the practices involved and these like weird family politics are involved and so it was just like got real bad real fast Mm -hmm. it made me wonder what it was like for rose's kids because like from what i can tell none of them were ever even maybe made aware like none of them really know about the practice but they had to live in this town presumably i don't it doesn't seem like they grew up somewhere else um but they had to live in this town where all the families like knew them and hated them and a lot of them were like you know awakening and like knowing that the other Thorburn kids weren't going to be awakened or something like it just like no wonder they all moved away (laughs) um because like Aunt Irene's family explicitly moved back to Jacob's Bell um so no wonder they all moved away from this town that hated them but I'm just kind of yeah yeah that sucks it does suck yeah. But then also while both throws in like an amazing comedic moment into this because the like with this bloodshed I pay you fur for exact my revenge was the like I laughed so hard. Like that's so fucking good. Like get it, Rose, scare the <laughs> shit out of these kids who know what you're saying and you don't. Like I bet a lot of them knew that like, oh, that's the demon family or whatever, and like that's so fucking yeah. funny. Um and I was like half expecting Furfur to show up and like, you know, murder those children or whatever, and I was like they don't deserve murder, but also like this is hilarious, and <laughs> that was real good. Yeah, and she's like, I remembered it because Furfur always sounded like an awfully silly I name. <laughs> I, oh, I'm wondering if Furfur is real. I kind of didn't think so, but maybe. Well, I mean, I, I kind of think so to be honest, because so like Daddy said, it sounded convincing, and if it ca- came to that and Furfur listened. I would not be much worse off. Hmm. So that that implies that Furfur is a real thing. Yeah. yeah. Well. <laughs> I'm guessing he was like, well, if you're not, if she's not awakened or anything, then it probably Furfur's won't. Probably, gonna, probably not going to do anything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and the the hair was really interesting and and sad because she felt really bad for Pearl because she, she knew Pearl liked her hair and she wanted to be friends with Pearl. I it didn't hit me the first time the danger of getting someone's hair for a practitioner because i mean like verona can turn herself into a cat or whatever like surely like yeah. and like the whole uh alexander doing the creepy stuff with bristow or whatever like having the hair of another person like has a lot of power over them yeah i don't understand why i mean i don't understand abuse there's not ever a good reason for it obviously but I didn't understand why he beat his daughter after this. I guess, like, to teach her the extra lesson of, like, don't be friends with these people. But, like, I think she got it. I don't know. I just... Yeah. I kind of feel like with this family, they used fear to kind of help drive that point in Mm -hmm. um, an awful lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what does it say here? It says... um, he asked me what the lesson was, and I said it was that I needed to listen. He asked me why I needed to listen, and I said if I was disobedient and did not listen, then everyone would hurt me. <laughs> said it's close enough. <laughs> so it's, it is awful. I'm not 
excusing any of this, but I'm like probably in his own twisted way. This is his way of like protecting her from everybody else. Cause like if I whip her this bad and scare her into obedience, then no one else can like do awful practice stuff to you. You know, maybe I don't, it, nah. I mean, cause it's like, I mean, with how screwed up they are, that's kind of what I would expect their idea of parenting to be. Right. I, I mean, it does seem like her dad is trying to like give her tools to protect herself. Like the whole yeah. fur fur thing. And that's how he justifies awakening her as like, you need to be able to protect yourself. And I'm kind of like, wait, um, wouldn't it be better if she was innocent, sure. but okay. <laughs> um, maybe he was thinking, uh, with all the bad karma from the demonic stuff. Cause I mean, Blake was still having people send others after him and stuff, even though he was innocent right. and well, or Molly like he wasn't was awakened or anything. Like everyone here is really shitty to us. Um, yeah. So I'm like, I could see hmm. them like, they might even be able to be like, Oh, we got rid of a demon practitioner. So that shouldn't hit my karma too bad. Right. Hmm. <laughs> so interesting. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know if that's how it would actually work in practice, but they could try to argue that, at least. Mm -hmm. Let me see. But yeah, so he basically was like, they were scared of, they're scared of her, so she can't ever be friends with them because, like, you can't trust people, you know. So, Grandma's mom is scary and leaves to find books. And so I was like, is she a collector? But also, is she like a demon book collector? <laughs> like how specific slash how variable can these practices get? And it seems like the debt, I mean, I'm kind of guessing the debt comes from the mom's side. Like, I still think this is maybe like matrilineal somehow. But also in 1.4, Blake is telling Rose about, they're talking about family stories. And he starts talking about like, our great grandfather was a robber baron kind of. And that he was approached by a widow, our great grandmother, and that these were Grandma Rose's parents. And so I'm like, wait, is this the robber baron? Or does this man die and she marries a robber baron? And then like, was she already married? And what is, what is happening? I'm glad you added that last part of your sentence. I added a lot of clarifying detail. I want people to know how I feel. There. Yeah, this family tree and the debt and the stuff feels important and it but it feels like I just like understand less of it the more we go. Yeah, I mean, it sounds about right. <laughs> <laughs> Glad we. Um, yeah. <laughs> I thought it was really interesting how like how she was talking about like talking to others and demons and stuff at the end of this first entry mm -hmm. just because it's like i feel like he did it in a very good like cool way like sounds obviously it should sound like a child saying it because it is a child saying it but <laughs> it's just like you know things that aren't my age or my daddy's age or even the age of the house that want to be my friend now tricky things and scary things and things that offer me gifts like pearl offered me the toy before she took me to the shed i have to be very very careful but I don't feel as lonely anymore. I just, so he, he's so good with the words cause they rip my soul into tiny little pieces and it's so sad. I mean, I, I just like, I'm glad that she's connecting, but like in the same way that I couldn't trust Pearl and she was trying to trick me with this gift. Like these things are also going to try yeah. to trick me with this gift, but she's also like, these things want to be my friend and maybe I'm going to, I'm going to give maybe my I dad a hug for letting me write this diary, which also like, <laughs> and then I am going to go talk to tricky things and I just like I'm glad she has someone but it sucks that she can't be like actual friends with any of these others she they like can't trust each other yeah it it's heartbreaking it's really sad mm -hmm. well then we go on to the next year which is just a hilarious like beginning <laughs> like Ars pint lives up to his name, the dirty rotten bastard. I'm like, all right, that innocence is slowly dripping away. <laughs> yeah, she's grown up a lot. Um, yeah, in a year, and it's it's still daddy, mm -hmm. but it's the the grammar's um, better, and the swearing and the 
I was willing to give him a kiss. And I don't know, it just, she's growing up very quickly. Yes. No, she sure is. This makes me think more about, I think you'd asked me about the others last week. And I kind of said that I didn't think that any of the others in this area were like free. And I still don't really think so. But it sounded like there's this like group of goblins. And I'm kind of like, oh, are those like her dad's goblins? Or did she just like, like, are there just goblins far off enough that she found them or something? Um, I wasn't totally sure about this, but it made me think like that maybe there are some free agents or whatever around Jacob's Bell. Because I guess most places suck for others and they have to live somewhere. Yeah, so she basically was like, yay, I beat Ar- Ars Pint. Um, and just have to bring him food and water once a day or he can let himself free. And she's like, I'm going to make him do a song and dance. Or at least, well, she didn't say necessarily I'm going to do, but she probably did. <laughs> just a song and dance about how mangy and pathetic he is in comparison to me. She's like, how long would I have to lock him up before that? <laughs> and then daddy's just like, gave her a pat on the head and was like, all right, good girl, I guess. <laughs> Go read more books. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, I can't tell, like, because, I mean, little kids can be really mean and really um, vindictive and have a very harsh sense of justice. And so I'm not sure how much of this is, like, more than normal, if that makes sense. Like, how much of this is, like, the way she's been treated by her dad and, like, the, like, fear and abuse that she's learning. Because just the, like... I mean... I don't know. I, I feel like having the goblin do a dance in front of people every time, just like his humiliation. I feel like that's pretty tame. But I, I as, like kind of. Yeah. But for a goblin, I don't think it would be like, I think a goblin would prefer to be like beaten up and have like nails driven through. Yeah. But crap. you think she knows that uh, she reads books. I mean, yeah, she might know that, but she also might just be like, ha, it'd be funny. I don't know. Like, she, sure, she does read books and stuff, but she's not exactly a master practitioner yet, right? Right, that's true. I mean, like, I as I'm, like, si- sitting here rereading this, it doesn't seem as harsh. I think just, like, the hard part is punishing him sounded kind of, like, scary and ominous. And I was like, oh, my God, the goblin would hate this. Probably. I'm thinking about, like, yeah, I mean, Cherry Pop and other... Bad. And even, like, Gashwad. Like, I feel like goblins have a very hierarchical system. Um, Their whole thing is trying to, like, become more big and strong and goblin-y and then they like get better names and crap and so having to like diminish himself for this like tiny girl oh yeah no i mean i'm not saying that he'd like it or anything i'm just saying i don't think that she feels like it's that big of a deal i mean i I feel like it's more like a taunting type of thing instead of a really cruel thing yeah yeah yeah, probably yeah i mean i could be wrong but i don't think she's at that level yet She'll get there, but she's not quite there yet. Yeah. Then her next entry, let me see, that is quite a few years later. So first one is, it goes from 1931 to 1932 and then 1939. So we have quite <laughs> a big, big jump there. Um, any guess why that is? Or um, I mean, it seemed like, well, from the first one we, we learned about Rose's Awakening and kind of some of the events that led up to that. We learned about her father. The second and third one, like, were introduced to Ars Pint, who sticks around, which was surprising. And I feel bad for him that he's, like, locked in a fucking ceramic doll or whatever. Yeah. That sucks. But it seemed like just kind of, like, you know, learning a little bit about her childhood and what it was like learning about the practice. And then we wanted to get to, like, more substantial plot. So we wanted to learn about, like, her as an adolescent, one of the big times she fucks up and uh, about, I mean, the, the the thing we learned this chapter is why she gives the house to a grandchild and not one of her kids, you know? Yeah, I was kind of, and every time you kept talking about, um, you know, why the heck isn't, like, what's her deal with her kids not getting the practice? I was like... You'll find out. <laughs> yeah. I, You'll find out soon. I was expecting like, because when I realized this was like grandma diary chapter, I was like, oh, I'm going to learn the name of the type of practice she does. I'm going to learn about her familiar. I'm going to learn, 
you know, like I just like all these like basic questions that I still have. But it was like, nope, you're going to learn this yeah. thing that you weren't even sure was really a thing. Like, <laughs> And it sure was. It sure was. Yeah, so she talks about the school, like a religious private school, which is kind of an interesting choice as well for demon practitioners, right? Yeah, I was like, this seems like a bad idea, but maybe learn about, I mean, like, where else are you going to really learn about demons than at a religious school? They are concerned like, I feel like if you're at, like, an atheist school, they're just, like, not going to talk about it one way or the other. Slash, they were, like... F- I mean, we both went to a private Catholic school, right? I mean, how much demonic stuff did they really go over? Maybe yeah, I just lot. zoned out into those classes, <laughs> but... Yeah, I feel like... I mean, again, this was the 30s, so maybe, like, they were a little more gung-ho about you need to learn about demons to stay away from them, but I feel kind of like... I don't know. <laughs> yeah, well, they they seem to be like, it's because of the languages. And I was thinking like, oh, is that because yeah. it'll make it easier to communicate with some of these demons or something? Like, why prioritize languages over other things? That's fair. I mean, I can see like, at least Latin stuff that's very old. Oh, so, um, that's you true. Know, I'm More sure useful a lot of languages. Are yeah, that's true. There was probably Latin yeah. happening. There's definitely Latin happening. Let me just tell you guys, <laughs> like, there's Latin we didn't learn Catholic Latin schools, in our Catholic, Catholic school, but... No, we didn't, because um, we're too modern and yeah. all that junk. But, like, didn't our dad say that, like, when he went to Catholic school, or at least when he was going to church, like, they used to say the masses in Latin and everything, too? Yeah, I think that was before Vatican II, though, so I think masses just, like, were in Latin. Yeah. Um, You're probably right. Yeah, now, they, now they're in English or in whatever... They're uh, in the vernacular. ...language. They're, yes. Which is very nice, because it's nice to understand what they're saying. Mm -hmm. It's like, sometimes you can break from tradition a little bit. Yay! We're kind of wild Catholics, though, you know? (laughs) We, like, don't just go with the normal flow, you know? We are. Yeah, we're like, yeah, we're kind of wild and crazy. (laughs) Anyway, (laughs) Um, let me see. So she was saying she'd been there a week, and she was reading one of her... Totally nice demon books. <laughs> and she hid it in a tree because um, she wasn't going to take it into the school because that's just asking for trouble, you know. Um, and then book got stolen by some kids because uh, c- kids are Cause little shit. Of course shits, they did, yeah. You know? Yeah, of course they did, you know. They're going to steal your shit. And then she went to try to get it back and she's freaking out. Yeah. I mean,. It just sucks because it's like she thought about it. She was like, oh, let me hide this book here because if I bring it into the school, like it's more whatever. And it just like sucks. And like, I'm like, oh, you should have hidden it with the practice. But like, she probably doesn't have the power to waste on like stuff like that. And it was just just like, you tell she was trying to be careful and it just sucks. Well, I mean, she's young, you know, young people. Right. No, but I mean, like I could see myself like trying to reason out something and being like, okay, I'm going to leave this here. And then it. You know, like this, this doesn't seem like, oh, she's so young and stupid. Like, this just seems like she tried and that sucks. I don't know. No, that's true. But you could also, I mean, no, I think you're totally right. But you also could say maybe bringing your demon book out in public to read isn't the best idea. Yeah. I mean, no, that's I fair. mean, that, that's true, though. Like, as a, I don't think as a 16 year old, um, I would have thought that I need to worry about that. Right. That's but true. She probably would have thought about it a little bit differently as an older woman. But so yeah, a couple days later basically goes and let me see, she gets some ghosts to scare some, some of the kids to try to, I guess, keep them away from the headmaster's office. Cause that's where the, the book is now. But a couple people were brave and they still try to go back and, oh my goodness, she saw some improper things. Well, I'm just like, are these people all having sex in the headmaster's office? Like, what is going on? <laughs> Why are they all having sex that's next to each like. other? Um, I mean... I just, that's a lot. Like Bad choices, okay? Like, teenagers and hormones and bad choices. Yeah, it's also, right? she's like, I'm around goblins, and, like, this disgusted me in this, like, super real way. And then, like, five days from now she's like yeah and i fuck aim and behame and i'm just like okay <laughs> i mean like and that's also very realistic and like you know people are judgmental and then people do things that they judge people for or whatever but it was just kind of like i don't know yeah 
Yeah. I also wanted to say, um, I'm, this is a sort of off topic. I'm not sure this where this was, but they she calls out Inquisitors. And I'm like, ooh, like, is that like what witch hunters used to be? Slash, is that a witch hunter, but specifically for demons? Or is that like a type of practitioner who finds like and hunts out demon practitioners? It sounded like they were like magic-y knowledgeable. But it also seems like, I'm kind of guessing they're more like a witch hunter because the Lord is like, hey, demon girl, like, find your fucking book. Not like, hey, demon girl, I'm going to kill you now, you know? Yeah. A witch hunter is kind of along the right lines. Not exactly the same, mm-hmm. but um, that is kind of a vibe I got. Mm-hmm. Which is pretty interesting. Mm-hmm. A lot of this stuff is interesting. Mm-hmm. It's like my main word I like to use. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's like intriguing. Hmm. Yeah, so anyway, back to the actual chapter <laughs> we were talking about. Uh, so yeah, so the Lord of Montreal. So she's like, I have to confront the mundane humans. Yeah, she's like, I have to do it while feeling as if they're somehow more distorted and unfamiliar than many of the beings I read about in my books. This poor girl has not had enough socialization. At, yeah, at all. It just makes it makes a lot of sense. Like, with the future Grandma Rose, seems like surprisingly well-functioning. Um, and it's no wonder that she's also kind of like sociopathic because like she had to, like she didn't have human interaction and then she also had to like cut herself off from a lot of human interaction. And it's, it's almost, it almost seems like with Rose that like others are safer because yeah, there it's either like people are innocent and she's going to like fuck them up by her being around them or people hate her and are going to try to yeah. kill her. And that sucks so bad. That sucks so bad. <laughs> That's tragic, man. It's hard enough being 16, you know? <laughs> you don't need to be dealing with all this stuff. Yeah. Like, that's that's rough, man. Yeah. Oh, little side note, staring at Rose's name. Is D for, like, demon or, like, devil? Or, like, I really hope Oh, not. my gosh, really? <laughs> like, you what's think the that D? her parents are like, yeah, let's keep this real subtle. Just, you know, especially we're sending her to this private well maybe religious school. her legal name is just a d as her middle name but it's because demon but if anyone asks like her parents like oh what does the d stand for they, they can't lie right they just say oh no we just thought that d sounded good with this name so it her middle name is just d legally i thought the d sounded fine <laughs> really i think it stood for demon <laughs> i don't know <laughs> could have <laughs> wild though <laughs> I, my brain's gonna explode if you say yes. I'm just gonna say that. <laughs> Please, like my brain will explode. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a bold and specific prediction that no, that's not, not demon. Not demon. Is that your? You were telling me earlier you're just stupid. Is is that your bold and specific prediction? Because no, I will say be. yes. That is stupid. <laughs> Let's just add that. We're gonna add that on. Because that's just, I like it. Um, cool. That's freaking ridiculous. Um, I honestly don't remember what her middle name is or if we find out what it is. So it could be. And then I'm just going to be like, well. You'd probably remember if her right. middle name was human. I mean, who knows? My brain's like, I don't know. I'm pregnant, so my brain's not working like a normal human being's brain. You know, it's sucked out by the baby. Uh. Yay, babies. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> um, all right. Then the next entry, a few days later, essentially, those kids end up calling a goblin to them, and the ritual gave it power to attack. It's just kind of horrifying. Yeah. I am confused. I didn't think this would work because they're not practitioners right so their words don't have like the spirits aren't watching their words or whatever but i guess like that this is a universe where it's like this is the universe where like bloody mary and stuff is real and so like i get and like this is the universe where like like shit does happen to the innocent yeah it's just like not all the time um and so i guess there are some avenues where this sort of thing happens but i was kind of like this this doesn't fully make sense to me because i didn't think that they'd be able to summon a goblin or do anything with the practice. I was literally just like, oh, they have to get this fucking book back. Like, I didn't think things would happen. I mean, I guess because there's like Melissa who just mm-hmm. like 
But it's like she saw things. Like she was like, she stole Verona's crap and then like saw a whole bunch of like magic kind of happen in front of her. And I thought that that was more of like the pathway or like, like with Clem, things were like happening to her constantly. Whereas this is literally just like, they do some thing that they think is some like dumb fake bullshit probably. And like, it actually works. And I'm just kind of like, I didn't expect that. I don't know if like, I'm just wrong and you're like, ha ha ha, there's something you don't know or what. No, I mean, like, I mean, they have a whole demon book there, right? That gives like rituals and things to say and all that. Right. So there's power in that book. Um, Mm -hmm. I just thought that like the awakening was like when the spirits start listening to you. Yeah, I mean, maybe certain things kind of want to happen. Hmm. <laughs> so, or like if other, because I mean, if they called a goblin to them, I guess the goblin was probably listening to, right? And they're probably like, I want to wreak havoc. <laughs> and you kindly said the knowledge G word, so I can go ahead and attack you or whatever. Maybe. I mean, there just sounds like a. Like kids playing with a Ouija board or something where like I don't th- I think that for a lot of people it's like ooh spooky and like ooh like I don't know and like some people are kind of freaked out and some people think it's a joke but yeah. I don't think that any of them were just like yes we're going to summon a goblin like this is re- this is what's happening you know but I mean this the practice doesn't really seem to care so much about subjective intent it cares much more about like the things that you do and the things yeah. that you say as opposed to like whether like what you meant I just and then also, like, they summon it, but then they can't control it. I just, I don't know. Like, this happened. Well, I mean, I'm just trying as, to sort it into my brain as, like, okay, this is possible. I mean, as you said, Melissa um, managed to do some diagram stuff. Right. Did she make any of it work? I thought it was, like, Lucy. Or it's, like, she found Verona's spell cards and then, like, dropped them in the I think she... F- she did, but then didn't she, Later she have was- another one of... Fucking Verona's right. spell cards and she finished it. Maybe that. Yeah, that sounds right. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I mean, if anything, even if you have to be like aware, you could argue that like being in this type of school, maybe certain things cause these kids to be a little bit more aware. Hmm. Maybe not though, but yeah. Well, either way, this was horrific and awful and sad, and it seems like this is a really defining moment for rose i thought it was really fascinating that she was like the scariest thing i can currently think of is like of being forgotten and i think that speaks a lot to her that reminds me of the enneagram (laughs) of the what (laughs) the enneagram have i the enneagram it's like a personality test it's like nine different personality type things i'm a three i think rose might be a three but one of the things that helps you identify which type you are is by thinking about like what some of your biggest fears are. So like threes Mm -hmm. are um, like have a deep seated belief that they're worthless um, and they're really afraid Mm. that that will be proven right. And so I'm not entirely sure if there's a better one that that maps onto, but it, that's what it kind of struck me of. And it made me really curious about, or I found it interesting that like this whole book is about, what happens after Rose dies and obviously like these people will never forget her but it was really kind of an interesting thinking of that as like like Rose isn't afraid of like incredible violence like Rose isn't afraid of like her power and getting away from her like Rose doesn't even seem to be totally afraid of like Minnie's fate she's more afraid of the fact that like the way the practice works means that these people memories will be rewritten and they might forget that she even existed as a way to deal with that true yeah i don't know if that's a fair interpretation but i I felt like i really like taught me a lot about rose that i'm gonna have to like dwell on (laughs) hmm that is an interesting thought i'm gonna get a a thesaurus someday and just look at other words for interesting (laughs) I mean, it's not going to happen right now. So. Just like say it in different languages. What's it in German? Oh, interessant. That's not very fun. What is it? Interessant. 
Awesome. Another word I get to mispronounce. <laughs> Intervissant. Yeah, German R's are kind of like French R's. They're like the... Intervissant. 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 I should ask Vitalis. Oh, yeah. It is in Lithuanian. Yeah. Hold on one second. <laughs> All right. I might be mispronouncing this already because it happens a lot when I talk to him about Lithuanian stuff, but Idomas. 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 Cool. Apparently. Sorry, <laughs> Lithuanian listeners. <laughs> we I'm hope probably... you exist. If you speak Lithuanian, <laughs> teach my sister so she can talk to her child. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm trying. Um, anyway. <laughs> Edomus. Yeah, interesting. All right. Um, I'm going to forget that word in about two minutes from now. Yeah, so many. I don't know. Like, what do you think happened exactly? Because they said they attacked, and Minnie was the only one that really got, like, affected, but she looks physically fine, but she's hollowed out. I didn't even think to, like, think about this. I was just literally like, Wow. This is left with only a vacant stare, unresponsive and unmoving, but for the monotonous rocking of her body. Her body was untouched, but that doesn't count for enough. I mean, I guess I kind of just assume that she, like, broke mentally, that, like, just, like, the fact that this was happening just kind of, like, pushed her to the edge and, like, she had some sort of, like, psychotic break or something. I don't know about science. But it just... I mean, either that or... You think, like, just the fact the goblin came? Yeah. I mean, either so, that or this isn't a goblin goblin. It's a demon goblin, and it did something. Just to read this little thing out again. So, they called a goblin to them, and the ritual gave it power to attack. Many suffered the brunt of it, and the rest of us were caught. Mm-hmm. So then they were like, police seem to think Herb and his friends as responsible. They intruded on a girl's school, and they make for ready suspects when Minnie is hollowed out, left with only a vacant stare, all that other stuff I said. Right. Um, I guess this is more of a demon type thing than a goblin, as I understand them, is what I'm thinking. Because, like, hmm. I see, when I think of goblins, I think of more, like, brunt force, physical force, stuff like that. Whereas when I think demons... I think more like possession and like fucking with your mind and temptation. And I mean, there's probably also some like torture and stuff, but just like maybe this is more of a, like a somewhere between goblin demon. Cause I mean, she says goblin. Mm. Um, she does say goblin. She doesn't say demon at all. Right. I mean, yeah, no one says demon in this whole thing, but she also describes Barbatorum as like maybe kind of a goblin as well in the last chapters um so i think maybe like because if i i I think of like a goblin attacking someone i think of like yeah like there'd be lots of physical evidence that a goblin fucking like beat you up based on the goblins i know (laughs) so i mean as far as you know like they pretty much all have to be like physical type of things if it's a goblin they can't do like mental manipulation or any kind of like mind trickery or like messing with your brain. Like, not that I can think of. I mean, it's just like when I think of goblins, I just think of like slapstick. Like I think of like, That's fair. I mean, and then I think of Toad Swallow and I'm like, but I, I don't think of Toad Swallow like, like there had to be a long conversation that somehow fucked her up. Not just like immediate like and like, uh, yeah, so I don't know y'all. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so, um. Rose ended up catching the goblin and kept the scene clear. She ended up going home. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Also, just randomly here. It's, um, so she says specifically, a small blessing that it was a goblin of no particular status or power. It could have been far worse. Yeah, I mean, that weirded me out, too, because I was like, I mean, he like really fucked this girl up, but I guess it wasn't like... But it just, it didn't, I mean, like, this wasn't cherry pop. This wasn't even, like, blunt munch. Like, this wasn't even, like, I don't understand. I. Yeah, after, after that April Fool's post, I don't blame you for it being <laughs> like, I don't know, this could be cherry pop, you know. That canonically you was a dream. Do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, but so cherry great. pop, 
you know, was in a big truck and murdering people with physical violence also. Yeah, I was so fucking confused I just have to say when I was reading that. Because I wasn't reading it on April Fool's Day either. Because <laughs> I was reading it like a little bit later and I was just like, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> like, I know people were joking about Cherry Pop. Yeah. Anyway, I'm sorry, but uh, that was great. It totally got me. It was pretty funny. I was so excited for a Zed interlude too. I was like, ooh. I know. Zed. <laughs> And then I was like, what? Yeah. And I was like, what? Like, Lucy's the only one left? Like, what the hell is happening? <laughs> Edith's like, yeah. yeah. So she goes home and expects, like, her dad to be there to give her a punishment. Um, ends up seeing her mom. She said she returned from a year-long trip. Um, and met her in front of the house. Asked her three questions. First, about her welfare. Second, about the Lord of Montreal. And the third were her books. All those things she was like, your books are fine, or Montreal's happy, I'm fine. Um, and then she left her study, leaving the snake familiar and dad. Yeah, this was really tense. You had a hilarious comment in your notes, I have to say, about the smell. Oh yeah, we're not there she yet, noted- <laughs> Okay, I'm sorry. Um, Jumping ahead. I'll let you say your comment first. <laughs> I apologize. But yeah, I just, I mean, going back to this, like, this feels more like you know, dad's home from the war or something like it feels like mom has been like, is like always gone. And I mean, I'm glad that she asked about her welfare first. That seems like a good sign. And then she like the family's political standing or, you know, whether we're more fucked, I guess. And then about her books. Um, And I'm just like, I find it interesting that her mom goes and collects books, but Rose writes books. Like mm, true Rose. I mean, maybe really benefited, probably definitely benefited a lot from the books her mom finds, but like, Rose creates uh, her or she yeah she makes her own books with her own information Mm -hmm. which is kind of cool and an interesting sort of parallel that I don't know what else to say about yet but yeah the the familiar is interesting I wonder does her dad have a familiar is this a sign about how her mom's more powerful a snake is also kind of an interesting thing yeah for sure so just to say the (laughs) <laughs> and the, so in, in here it's like even now as I write this this the house has a smell very like the aroma in that scene I stumbled upon with Minnie and the rest that had unsettled me so much so what was your comment Malia <laughs> so I'm like does she smell vagina or does she smell some goblin shit because <laughs> is the scene that disturbed her finding them having sex or is the scene that disturbed her like the horrifying like goblin attack or whatever um, the first time I was like, the house smells like vagina. Um, and then the second time I was like, oh, wait, <laughs> it could also be this. That's true. I still don't know. Like, did her parents like have sex when her mom got home? Because like, I don't want to think about that. <laughs> <laughs> but that's like literally what I thought. I'm really sorry if this is like not at all what was going on. Like, as an author, you know, <laughs> like, why? What, what's, what's the benefit of pointing that out? You know, you got to paint the scene. <laughs> <laughs> their her parents you know like the sex it's been a while her mom's been gone been for a, a while. year that's true i feel like still gotta get some you know <laughs> people like having sex in studies in this book i guess i guess so well put your thoughts in the comments <laughs> in our reddit thread Was it? or leave on our twitter or on our email uh let us know what you think the smell is from <laughs> Who knows? I mean, maybe something different we didn't think about. You know? I don't know. Um, I'd love to see what your thoughts are. Um, That would have been a great discussion question, but alas, it is not to me. (laughs) Yeah, I feel like she's, like, projecting with this snake. Like, I feel like it's, like, his every movement mocked me. I'm like, did it? Like, is the snake just sitting here? Like, I mean, it seems like these people have, or these two have history and that's why she hates him or whatever. And like, is she like, yeah. are she and her mother not on good terms? Like, Amplos is my mother's familiar, so he is her ally. Father is, of course, my mother's partner. And then there is me. Like, it sounds like it's like everyone against Rose. But like, yeah, we're not seeing a lot of her and her mom's relationship. So I'm curious as to like, why she might not see her mom as her ally. Other than, I guess she's real scary. But yeah, like, I feel like I'm not sure that he was really mocking her. 
or if she was just projecting. And I feel like stabbing him is kind of harsh. Yeah, I mean, I think she just, yeah, she had a lot of emotions that kind of came out. Yeah, the real big thing. This is the section and where she makes the oath um, Mm -hmm. that she will never let her kids go through this and she'd let them leave lives untouched. That really got her dad's attention. Yeah, I think that this to me felt like the like very teenager-y dramatic teen movie scene, but it's also like the dramatic teen movie, but you can't take it back ever was sort of interesting. Um, I also think she has a good point that her life was really shitty and that maybe she shouldn't, I mean, she yeah, have been awoken um, that this is a lot of responsibility for a person, especially a child. And I, I think it's interesting, like thinking about Rose as a shitty grandma or whatever, but then also thinking about like, like we don't have any evidence so far that Rose like beat any of her children. And I feel like she probably just re- stuck them on a pile of decaying boar car- like corpses. Right. Which is bad. But I think that her dad beating her until her urine was Peter. bloody. Yeah. Was worse. I mean, we, they, they probably cross a line where there's <laughs> not a lot of point in comparing these things. But that yeah, wasn't better, but, to punish. But you never thought you were going to be comparing those two. Huh? Well, like, like <laughs> what would you rather have like, as a child? <laughs> I feel like that wasn't to punish her kid. Um, It was very exploitative. Yeah. It was very sociopathic or psychopathic or whichever one it is. Like, it wasn't okay. But it, it didn't, it wasn't like, this is to teach you a lesson. And, like, this is about controlling you. It was just like, oh, you're this object to me. Which, again, not better. But... <sighs> Hopefully young enough to where they wouldn't recall anything. Um, however, you can usually remember kind of messed up Incredibly stuff from a pretty things, young yeah. age. Yes. Right. But depending on how she did it, maybe you could argue maybe it wasn't that traumatic, even though a demon got summoned. Who knows? Yeah. We weren't there. Who can judge, right? <laughs> well, I think the thing <laughs> is, like, that I'm trying to get at is, like, it seems like Rose... Like, in this moment, it seems like she maybe cares a little bit about her future children, but it's also kind of a vindictive, like, you shouldn't have done this to me thing. Yeah. But she's making a value judgment about, like, I wouldn't make my children go through this. And I'm just, I'm curious as to how much she regretted this oath and how much she wished she could, like, fuck up her kids' lives and if that would have been easier for her. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure it would have been a lot easier. Um, But... It's like, man, if she's a shitty grandma now, <laughs> I just how shitty would she uh, have been? Like, if everybody was a practitioner, like, yeah, no, how their shitty lives would have. Everybody would have just. It just would have been like extra, just awful right. for everyone. Well, I just, yeah, and I, I don't know. I just, I love Rose a little bit more, or I love Grandma Rose a little bit more because of this oath. Um, even if it wasn't mm-hmm. actually like, altruistic. Like, even if it was kind of, like, mm. a selfish thing to say to get back at her dad. Like, I don't know. I love her a little bit more for this. Um, Like, it it's feels true. like Rose has kept some of her humanity or some of her something. No matter how little of it she has when she dies. That's true. But, yeah. I don't know. I love her. <laughs> <sighs> All right. Um... Our last entry in the diary here, um, she basically is like, I'm not going to write the bit at the beginning anymore because there's no use. Mm -hmm. But she feigns Eamon. Um, You you looked up how to pronounce this earlier. I feel like we've been pronouncing it wrong. Oh, I already forgot. It was like Beheim or something uh, ridiculous. Beheim. I I mean, sorry if it is Beheim. I kind of like Beheim. 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 It reminds me of... Yeah, Austin Powers, Bam. like, behave. Uh-huh. I know, it's really stupid. <laughs> um, feel free to edit everything out that I say. That's fine. That'd be a weird podcast. Um, <laughs> just Malia talking to herself. Like, man, I'm like, I guess she can sure keep a conversation one-sided. Like, I mean, it's working. Just, like, um, silences and I'm like, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> uh, yeah, I say I say a lot of stupid things, but it's all in the name of uh, trying to make you laugh a little bit. 
so yeah, basically says he end up like following her, um, and they end up like uh, getting in an altercation. You could say. <laughs> This also was very teen movie. Not, it not in a bad way, but yeah, this was very teen movie. It was like, uh, they they get in a fight. And the passion. She, like, uses arse pint, <laughs> which, you know, have to have arse pint there. Um, and then they end up, like, having a romantic moment. <laughs> um, which <laughs> is hilarious. I was so close, y'all. How was I almost right? You were so close. How was I almost right? This is so funny. Okay. Yeah, I also just like it's the way this is not a teen movie, right? Or like a, you know, romantic comedy is like they don't have. I mean, maybe this points to why some of romantic comedies can be really fucked up, but like these two people don't have like an actual connection and they're not like actually like madly like in love with each other and simmering and they're not like meant to be and it's not like all gonna be fine and maybe like we should question all those romantic comedies where it's like these people are like screaming at each other and then they're making out or whatever but the first time I read it I was kind of like ha like that was funny and interesting and like maybe Rose is like gonna learn how to make her life hers and take more control or whatever but then the second time I read it and I was like this is more like, it's still really lonely. Like, it's still like, she can't trust this man. She can't be with this man. This man is not, I mean, like plot twist. This is the dad or whatever, but like, it it seems like the, (laughs) her, you know what would suck if like, like she got pregnant with someone who had sworn to teach his kids to practice. I mean, I guess that would actually be okay because like, she didn't say, my children will not go through this. She said, I wouldn't make my children go through this. So as long as she's not the one doing it, maybe it's fine. Anyway. Um, if one of them had to be forced born anyway, um, (laughs) but it just, it seems really lonely. It seems like, well, she said I would, yeah, I would let them lead lives untouched by all of this. Uh, which I guess you maybe could argue is like the demon stuff. Maybe, but also she would allow them to not, she would ensure that their lives would be untouched. I feel like I'm not super convinced, but I see where you're going. Yeah. Um, but just this, this moment with Eamon doesn't seem like a new, like, it seems like, like a change in her life, but it doesn't seem like, and now I have this great, like relationship with this man or like, and now like, I'm not going to be alone anymore or now like whatever, like she's still alone. Like she's found that like, maybe she'll be able to have sex sometimes or whatever, but it's, it's still lonely. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Well, I think unless you, do you have any more thoughts on this? Mm, Nah. All right. Um, that is the end of bonds. Woo! Woo! Well, okay, let's do the pale in comparison one. So basically, closest thing that we were kind of thinking, this is pretty different than a lot of the well, interludes and different things in pale, for sure. Um, except, that, like Malia was saying, it's kind of does give um, a little bit of extra materials vibe, and just in terms of like it being a diary, which is pretty cool. Mm-hmm. But we're going to try to compare... Rose's upbringing um, to some other practitioner families, so, like from the Blue Heron Institute. This is really the first, uh, at least in a really in depth look, we kind of get into a uh, practitioner family. Mm-hmm. Um, so, what are your thoughts, Malia? The, the like deep level of control and everything really reminds me of like, I want to say like maybe the, the Mussers. I honestly have a hard time keeping track mm. of all those families, but just like That's fair. the super war ones or whatever might be a different family as well. Okay. And even like with the finder family, like all of these families have like a set path and a set, like you will do this thing. And like, nobody really has a choice. Like there's not like a, 
oh, what kind of practitioner do you want to be? It's like, you're going to be this because like, this is what we have resources in. This is what I know. Like, this is what you're going to do. Like the, the Ted's yeah. are the strange ones for throwing off the shackles of their family tradition and like becoming goblin queens or whatever, which like good for them. But that, that kind of strikes me as like, like Rose here does not have a choice. Yeah. And maybe her family controlling her makes a little bit more sense because of like the debt. But it also seems like they really ought to get away from demons if the debt is like that bad. Um, yeah. But that's what I thought. I, I also mean, wanted to hear what your thoughts were about. You brought up when we were coming up with this Talia's family, which I think is a really good comparison. And I wanted to know if you had other thoughts about another little girl who's like tortured by her mom. So funny enough, like just based on what we see and we don't really see a lot. And based on what we kind of hear, it seems like Rose upbringing in terms of punishment and all that is more mundane um mm. so yes it's kind of awful um like i guess it's she's like oh i don't get beat every time like where i pee pink but times this happened it's been really bad <laughs> yeah that's not good y'all um but for talia she was saying like pretty much every, every time she's kind of talked about something traumatic like um, her mom's using the practice um, mm -hmm. as like a punishment mm -hmm. um, or something, which you could say, I mean, being demonic uh, <laughs> practitioners may be a little bit much to use a demon to punish your kid. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, you could say that you could say that, like, I don't know. I mean, whereas you could say like using doll type practice stuff seems a little bit more hmm. but i mean in that aspect uh i guess it's good that <laughs> well, it's like if you're going to be teaching somebody about the practice um and trying to get them to love it and trying to get to learn about it maybe you shouldn't be using that as a punishment hmm. mm -hmm. that's going to create a lot of negative feelings towards that i mean it just kind of feels funny to be like Oh, at least the demon practitioners didn't do that. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> um, but who knows? Like, maybe they did use practice at certain points for punishment mm -hmm. or for different up things we did, didn't know. Because they don't have to use, like, straight up demons for that. They can use other things mm -hmm. as well. But I just remember, like, you know, Talia saying specifically what they had, like, that messed up, like, music box thing mm -hmm. that, like, you can't made move. her familiar keep dancing right. around her and she couldn't move um and it was like it was because like she came to dinner like two minutes late or like she didn't turn off her tv something right like that yeah on time or something and then also just being like oh yeah like my familiar is my familiar because like <laughs> my mom is gonna have her like replace me <laughs> you know kill me and replace me but i just said why don't you just be my bff <laughs> instead and it works out <laughs> um yeah like that's not it's not great totally messed up yeah, so, I mean, they're both awful, but um, just Rose's family seems more mundanely awful, hmm. funny enough. Mm -hmm. um, not, I mean, I'm sure they're, like, the practice kind of, like, pretty awful, too, but we haven't seen that part, at least, mm -hmm. of it. So, I don't know, what do you think about my thoughts on that? Does that kind of line up with you, or you're like, I totally disagree? <laughs> no, yeah, I hadn't thought about the disciplinary side i guess i was thinking in terms of um like grandma rose and her diary is kind of like children aren't usually awakened you know but like i then ah. when you were like oh talia and like jojen and stuff i was like oh shit like i mean they were a little bit older than grandma rose was when she started writing her diaries we don't know exactly when they were awakened but i bet talia was awoken at like two and a half or some shit like her mom's nuts and it just seems like oh that's true like Talia seems to have a lot of goodness in her despite the horrible things that have been done to her and I felt like mm -hmm. Grandma Rose like had some of that in her as well like the the they like rhymed to me the the innocence and the desire to like be a good daughter is what mm -hmm. I was thinking of okay I can see that <laughs> I didn't think about that actually so it's good that's why we have yeah <laughs> multiple viewpoints and all that, you know, <laughs> pretty cool. <laughs> no, that, that makes a lot of sense. That's, that's interesting. And then that poor guy who's, I'm blanking on his name, but whose mom's just like, oh the most God. embarrassing mom. 
kind of hilarious looking back, but like one of our things that our mom, I think she, she only did this once, but it was super embarrassing, <laughs> but it's pretty hilarious, actually. Definitely not like a scarring for life type of thing. Because <laughs> we were in carpool and uh, and she was trying to pick us up after school. We were spending too much time talking to our friends um, but not going to the car. So she rolled down all the windows and cranked up the music like as loud as she could. And she started playing that wonderful Beatles hit, Why Don't We Do It in the Road? <laughs> like as loud as you possibly could. Oh, so loud. And man, I don't think we've gotten to the car uh, that fast um, <sighs> ever. Uh, ever. So, yeah, that was, I mean, like, that's like kind of humorous and like lighthearted, whereas all that other stuff is like, ooh. Yeah. Cringe and. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, it was Saul. I looked it up. Saul. Okay. Saul Ferguson. Sorry, Saul. Sorry, Saul. There's so many freaking kids in this. There's a lot of kids, man. I don't know. All right. Um. So now we get to go to Malia's bold and specific prediction, which we already talked about one of them because I'm adding <laughs> that one because that's just ridiculous. Um, <laughs> D is for demon. Right. So I was thinking about Grandma Rose and like Eamon and like who's the dad? Because I, I had talked a bit maybe the first episode about like, oh, they never say it's like grandma and grandpa's house and trying to figure out like who did she marry? Like who is this guy or whatever? And so I'm not entirely confident in this prediction, but my prediction is that Grandma Rose never got married and that okay. all of her kids were had out of wedlock. Maybe with the same guy. I don't know. Maybe with the same guy. Okay. Maybe she like, I was gonna maybe ask that. Grandma Rose went to like a sperm bank. I was like, fuck this. <laughs> like, I have to have kids because of like the karma or something. Fuck this. Like, <laughs> fuck men. Okay. Um, I'm not, yeah. Again, I'm not entirely confident with that prediction, but just like, no one mentions grandpa. I can't. Uh, I mean, I guess I could see her being in like a really loveless, lonely, awful marriage. But I can't see her having, like, a partner in life mm. based on, like, this diary. Like, it doesn't seem like she can trust humans. Oh, I have an even better bold and specific <laughs> prediction, if I may say. I'm just going to, like... Go for it. I'm just going to say it. I'm not saying if this is true or not. I'm just saying this to see if you want to add this onto your bold and specific prediction, okay? Mm -hmm. Just because this could be a game changer. <laughs> I mean... It also might not be at all, but you, you don't know. You don't know that. So grandma's husband is her familiar. Oh, that's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> like, that makes me so uncomfortable. Like, what? <laughs> uh. Just because, like, we, I don't know what type of other her familiar is. And then, like, did no we one notice that human before that? What? Oh, I guess. But, but <laughs> I don't know. I just threw it out there. You can either. I mean, I guess there was that story about the the throw it back out the. There was a really old story about the, the woman, who was married to a king who sucked, and she ran away to be with like the some other the lord of the forest person. And then bad stuff happened or whatever. And that was kind of like an example of a familiar relationship. And it is based on marriage. Oh, I hate this. Oh, I hate this. Um, <laughs> uh, 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 hey, I mean, you can you can ignore it, but it's going to be in your brain forever. You know, it's fine. It's never going to leave. You can just be like, forget that. That's a weird prediction. Jenny, you're weirdo. But, you know, it's fine. It's indelible. You can just stick with your stick with your like rose demon, you know, Thorburn. Rose Demon Thorburn. Thor <laughs> yeah. Senior. That's her second prediction. <laughs> Rose Demon Thorburn Senior. <laughs> I'm trying to say the D is for Demon or Rose Demon Thorburn Senior are probably going to be the two contenders for names for this episode. <laughs> <laughs> she wants the D. <laughs> the D. Jeez. <laughs> 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 <sighs> oh, Everything's awful. Okay. I'm so happy. All right. That wraps up this chapter. 
So, so wait, you didn't say if you like nixed my prediction or not. God, I, you can nix it. I'm just trying to contribute some things. Like okay. I really kind of like it, but I want to say no. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, well, just like it's, it's just the, the marriage and stuff. But I feel like somebody would have been like, "Hey, why did Dad die?" And we never fucking talked about him ever again, unless it was like a I mean, secret. Stuff gets erased from the memory. Whole time. Think about the Hungry Choir. They don't even remember they had kids. And I guarantee you, after having a kid, you don't forget. No, I'm going to say no. Although, uh, maybe I'll put it up as an alternate because it would be really good. Up to you. I just want, I just threw it out there. Just think of it as like some free, It's going to, you know. It's going to be my brain for a bit. I know. I'm kind of, I feel, I was like, I didn't have a good way to try to hit that at your brain. <laughs> um, but... <laughs> So, we're going to kind of go over, like, a reflection of this arc. Because we're done. We're done with the arc. Do, 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 do. Bonds! Woo-hoo! We made it! <laughs> we made it! 15 to go! Yeah, but, you know, that's one down. True. So, we're getting there. <laughs> so, I guess, like, overall, like, I guess, how do you feel, like, at the end of this arc compared to when you first finished reading Pale? Like, or the Pale arc. First Pale arc. You know what I mean? I guess this to me feels more like an intro. Like it feels a little bit more okay. like, okay, now, like, cause like they just did the awakening ritual. Right. And it wouldn't have made sense for them, yeah. I guess, to do it right off the bat in true this story as much, but it, it feels kind of like, okay, like now we're beginning. Like, whereas like the first arc of pale ends with the hungry choir, which was a lot. And that was much more like, eh, um, <laughs> And this is more like, oh, <laughs> right. like demons and Grandma Rose. I don't know. This is just much more like, <laughs> like f- setting the scene. Whereas the Hungry Choir was just like, wow, though, like it was like, Bleh! like <laughs> here's some stuff that's gonna keep you up at night. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so after reading this, like, I guess let's. Are there any specific things you want to kind of talk about, like? either actions that happened or random things that you're thinking about. I mean, so I was thinking a little bit, I don't know if you wanted to ask this question later, but reflecting on bonds again, Okay, it seems yeah. to me like the biggest bond in this story so far is Blake and Rose, right? Like it seems mm. like, like they're the relationship I'm super interested in. I want to know like it, it, what, ha- what's happening with Rose with the awakening ritual. Like, is she going to get out of the mirror? I want to know, like, how is their relationship and partnership going to continue to grow? Um, because another thing that really struck, uh, stands out from this chapter that we just read is, like, Grandma Rose is alone. But, like, Blake and Rose aren't. And, like, their relationship is not perfect. But they have each other. And I think that that uh-huh. is really important and really going to help both of them. And it just, yeah, it seems to me like the bond that's the most important is their bond to each other other things about bonds it's still like being tied down being constrained they're they're tied to this house they're forced into this lifestyle but that's kind of the biggest thing that i've gotten and i'm excited about learning more about it's like their relationship and then it's like and then demons and then this town i guess and then johannes because like freaking johannes (laughs) Are you bringing talking about that in terms of bonds, like, like the like no, actual bonds, or just the okay, just the arc? Yeah, okay. thinking about the those are like the things that I'm like excited about, about. I guess yeah, that stand out from this okay. arc to me. Real quick, going back to bonds because you were just talking about like mm-hmm. that's the biggest bond. Um, what I guess like are there any other like major kind of bond type things that you see going through this arc whether it's like broken bonds like familial Mm. bonds like any like pact (laughs) any packs um any like i don't know any anything like any welding that seems pretty cool (laughs) you know i don't know yeah i mean family family chemistry family right is such a huge part of this uh-huh. story and the their family relationship is really frayed and really strained with a lot of the people in the family but they're mm-hmm. still like 
bonded together because they're family, not in a like, you know, sometimes it's hard, but it all works out in the end. But just like literally like <laughs> the universe is like fucking force these people to deal with this karmic load. On a, I guess, scale of one to ten, ten being most likely, one being, we'll just say zero being like not going to happen. Um, how likely would you think that that's going to be the type of ending we get to the story? <laughs> Like, happy, like, it all works out. Like, like, yeah. Yeah. Just, I mean, just to speculate. I would say, like, a, like a three. A three. Okay. All right. I like it. Yeah. I mean, I don't think, I mean, I hope that this story isn't going to end in, like, horrible, awful tragedy. I'm thinking about the other two Wild Bow endings that I know. And and so he he doesn't seem to end things, like, with, like, literally everyone is dead, lol. Like, he doesn't. But but I don't think that there's this... a first time for everything. No. <laughs> um, no, I mean that's what Twigs for. Okay, but you think like there, it's possible but unlikely, essentially. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I was just curious. I guess kind of thinking about. Well, there's a demon in the attic, right? Like the demon is like bound in the attic. Yeah. Um, Thank goodness. And, um, bonds can like. Yeah, restrain people. I'm trying to tie True. Patrick into this somehow. I feel like I'm having a hard time doing it, but just thinking about I mean, they're now they're now like bound to their word. Or at least Blake is. We don't know about Rose. True. Okay. Awesome. Those are my thoughts. <laughs> so I guess some of the other things you were talking about. Um you said Johannes. Johannes. Um, and a couple of the other things you said you're are kind of big on your mind. <sighs> Demons. Uh, the town and just like how it works and how okay that's all so, going i guess are you still not 100 percent clear on what kind of or like you're still like a little bit in the dark about um grandma rose in terms of what she what kind of practice or i mean i th- it seems just like she works with demons and i don't know what that is as a practitioner um like i don't ha- like i don't know if there are like lots of different types of demon practitioners i don't know if it's just like you're a demon practitioner i don't know if it's just like like an aspect of what she does but not mm. the literal thing okay like like how much nuance there is um yeah and okay like something with demons could be just demon practitioner could be squirrel demons <laughs> well i think it's just like and know, like they they classify Lucy as like a like a fairy warrior lady or whatever it was like combat fairy ah. magic you know which is like pretty dang specific but I'm wondering if it can go the opposite way where like some people are like some people's practice involves demons but it's not like I mean she seems pretty set on demons but maybe she um is a but maybe some people like just use that as like an aspect yeah of, okay i can see that all right so definitely demons involved <laughs> just not sure if it's like all like just straight up demon and that's it or like if it's just like an aspect of something okay that's fair i'm also still thinking about like molly and Paige, although molly is slowly like being i mean they're both sort of slowly being left behind as we're entering more into this like magical world i'm like kind of thinking about them less but i okay. i think we're gonna learn more about why grandma didn't pick Paige, and like hopefully more about why molly was picked um okay yeah at least as it goes on mm-hmm. hopefully we stop learning about how molly died because man i really <laughs> i really don't want to know <laughs> do you think we'll ever find out like um who or what yeah did it yeah yeah as awful as this question is, like any predictions? No. Um, and I'm not saying if we've seen like the culprit yet or not, or culprits or whatever. Yeah. I mean, if it's one of the, maybe it was one of the Bahames. He seemed to suggest that it wasn't one of them. No, I don't know. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> That's fine. But I figured I'd throw that out there. I feel like the next chapter will start with. Like, going to the council meeting thingy, and I'm excited for that. Mm. Okay. 
Do you think everyone that he saw in the dream is going to be at the council meeting? Or you think it's going to be like, just kind of like a mixture of random people? I or... don't think Maggie will be there. But I okay. think that probably the Behames the Duchamps, the rabbit girl probably, and then the First Nations woman will be there. I guess I don't think Johannes will be there, but... Okay. Because he, it seems like he wasn't a regular tender based on grandma's diary. Okay. Um, I out of curiosity, why don't you, why don't you think Maggie will be there? Um, because of how Laird like forgot she existed and dismissed and ignored her. I, I just don't know that she's like okay. welcome or invited to the town council meeting yet. Is that everybody in the dreams? People at the table, Maggie, the girl with the rabbit, the First Nations woman, Johannes. I thought so. You're forgetting, like, you're forgetting someone or t- two people specifically. Oh, the witch hunters! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're not going to be there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Pretty sure. Just like, don't even have to speculate well, on that. Invited. You're like, they're just. Like, maybe okay. they show up and try to fucking murder everyone, like the dude in Pale, but um, no, they're not going to be there. Okay. Let me see. So you think, like, it's going to start out with the council meeting? Or, like, like, on their way to it. Okay, or on their way to it. I guess, where do you see, besides just that, like, do you see this, like, story going in any one particular direction? It's, like, a really hard question <laughs> to answer, I know. Well, but, like, okay, yeah, so the things that are going on, right, there's... There's Johannes and like the town v Johannes, and then there's like Hillsglade House and how everyone wants to get rid of it. Mm-hmm. Are like the two big external plots, I think, like okay. outside of the house. And then there's so then there's Rose, um, and her issues with the mirror and her issues with the practice. Uh, there's Blake just okay. like learning how to fuck with demons. There's the goddamn <laughs> lawyer who we still haven't met. Ah, yes. Um, ooh, I wonder if he'll be at the meeting i hope so except like meet your fucking client i don't know um <laughs> i'm so mad um and then there's like maggie and the fairy like over there and then there's like blake's family and Paige and that stuff uh i mean i think at some point we're gonna have to like deal with whether or not the house will stay or like okay something i think we're gonna have to maybe deal with johannes mm, okay and like i don't know it'd be really nice if by the end of the story it was like and the karmic dead is gone but that seems like too happy ending that's optimistic that's for sure um it just it like something needs to be somewhat resolved with that i guess it could be an internal resolution where blake is like and we will keep on with the good fight <laughs> <laughs> against the karma or whatever that's right we'll keep on i want to go back to the lawyer just because i've <laughs> you've mentioned a few times through these podcasts like, you're like i need to see this lawyer um so just to recap you're th- i think you were saying you are thinking this is like a karmic law mm-hmm. practitioner the lawyer's my lawyer. best hope for the karmic law being in this book <laughs> <laughs> right we're gonna hold on to that damn it yeah until Someone tells us otherwise. Yeah, so I think he has a karmic um, law practice, which is, it like brings my heart so much joy to say that out loud. Well, if there, if for some reason there isn't any in the story, maybe that will be the next thing that we'll go right. It'll be pyre or um, pure or <laughs> pure, pure. pure. The story of the karmic law practitioner. All right, I'm down. Um, <laughs> or if there's some kind of law term that starts with a P that's one syllable. And four oh, letters. Um, yeah. Uh, puke. <laughs> Paralegal. <laughs> what was that? Paralegal. <laughs> that's right. Uh, that's right. You thought it was parahuman. It's paralegal. <laughs> I'm dying. I just knocked my water well over. I'm so happy. Okay. Um. <laughs> oh, jeez. Okay. Um, <laughs> back to the lawyer. Um, 
Let's see. Any other thoughts on the lawyer? When do you think he's going to... So you said he might show up at the meeting. Yeah, I feel like... Well, I just feel like the council meeting will be a good next... Would be a good next thing. But I also feel like if it's still in a couple days, they should meet their lawyer. And I want to see that. Um, But maybe the lawyer's just going to be at the council meeting. Like, lol. (laughs) Hey, guys. Sorry, guys. (laughs) Um... (laughs) Or maybe he'll, like, intercept them on the way to the council meeting. Yeah. All right. Now to talk about our discussion question, which is, what would your site look like if you were to awaken today? Which is not the easiest question to answer, because I feel like we don't really know. <laughs> <laughs> but had some really good responses. First one here is from Ace of Sword. They said that they most likely would see connections, but they go on to say that that's boring, so. <laughs> Um, they were saying ideally if they have, um, all the resources and information that they would need based on like what they most likely would do as a practitioner. So they'd most likely be a collector and they like the idea of creating magical objects. Essentially, they say their site might be kind of like a magnifying glass or microscope that magnifies details and maybe shows the smaller spirits permeating things. And that would help with crafting and monitoring what's happening on a spiritual level both while it's being created and while it's soaking in the realm's energies, which I feel like that's pretty cool. Already, everybody's put a lot more thought into it than I have. (laughs) (laughs) Fox. Yeah, so Bisexual Punch Party. Which is a fantastic name. So good. Um, (laughs) But they say that as someone with anxiety, they're always scanning their environment and people around them. They say that at first their site would probably show like the condition and disposition of things. So like showing if environments are magically influenced or tainted or aspected toward a certain realm. And they think that for people it would show like their general status and things like their mood and how they feel toward bisexual punch party in particular. (laughs) All right. Next person. uh, This person uh, did mention in a comment that we badly butchered their name. So I'm going to badly butcher it in a different way. Um, Cause I think I said to Zar Watt last time, but now I'm like, maybe it's supposed to be like a sentence. Like they were going to say like, tis a rat, but they did a typo there. So tis a <laughs> Watt. There you go. That's my, that's my guess. <laughs> um, so they say they think their site would most likely parallel Avery's site just because they have a similar focus on relationships. Um, except Tis a rat. Yeah, I'm so sorry, dude. (laughs) Says that um, they're a little bit more nostalgic in comparison to Avery. So they're thinking that they could probably see connections between places, things, and people um, with themselves. But they're saying it's a temporal thing. They can see how it changes. So if they've been in a place for a long time, they can see um, like their connection to that place grow. In contrast, if they see someone they've been absent from for a while... They can tell the connection has been weakened. They said that it'd be, it would give the color of a person's intentions and says are inextricably tied to their relationships with people, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, Mr. Catfish has two ideas about, I'm just going to go with his site. Basically, they were like, the first one that they were talking about was um, if they were part of like an old family, essentially, like in the practice. And the second one they were talking about is just like a waking on their own as an individual. So in the first scenario where Mr. Catfish is part of a like old practitioner line, he thinks he'd get a site based on evaluation. So like the impure and the refined would really contrast in his site um, suited for alchemy and apparently has minor face blindness. And he thinks that that would be exaggerated by the site and all the faces would kind of match with, um, people wearing masks depending on their role in society which i think is a really cool idea Mm -hmm. but in the second scenario where he's awakening as an individual he thinks it would depend on how he personally views the world and that it would lean on the written word similar to bristow's site but less factual and more poetic all right and then last but not least we have the bee vampire so they say a site that would be both functional and symbolically connected to them uh, would probably be object related. So they go ahead to say they study archaeology. So the function and use of objects greatly interest them. 
They're saying their hypothetical site would be used to highlight objects, particularly hidden or covered mm. objects, um, should be useful for both excavation and practice alike. It could also show the connections to an object like ownership claim, emotional attachment, etc., in an abstract fashion, which that is pretty awesome. Yeah, all Not these sites lie. sound more thought out and more useful than ours. Yeah, I think I said something. What I say, like, my kid's throwing rocks or something. Yeah, I yeah. did not think that. Very well, <laughs> good job, you guys. Um, and or some of these answers, at least, are kind of, like, cherry-picked because they're a little bit long. But mm-hmm. definitely an interesting read, so feel free to go and look at our Reddit thread um, if you guys are interested in reading the full comments. I think it's worth yeah. it. They're pretty good. Um, yeah. And just, like, thanks, y'all, for contributing. We really love reading and hearing what you have to say. Yes. Like, for real. Thank you. <laughs> so, before we totally wrap up, I'm going to go over our discussion question this, re- this week, which is a little bit different. Instead of us asking you a question, we would love it if you'd ask us some questions. Feel free to ask us whatever you'd like. Either, like, what are thoughts on the story so far or on Pale. Um, I mean, we've also read Worm and Ward, so I guess if you have some questions on that, I guess that's fine. We'll try right. to shout out if we're doing spoilers on those. Uh, yeah. I guess. You can ask us about um, our lives, about being sisters, about our favorite sandwiches. Yeah, I mean, like, there's some things that we're obviously not going to answer, like, sorry, you can't have my bank info. <laughs> You know, like, I'm probably not going to give you my address yeah. um, where I live. But, yeah, you can still ask us some questions, you know, and we'll do our best to answer stuff. Yeah, well, we'll figure out. I, it's likely that this will be a full, like, Q&A episode, and we'll figure out if we're going to publish this in lieu of the weekly episode or if we're going to um, mm-hmm. d- do many questions we get, or, basically. Yeah, or just tack it all but, at the end. <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, uh, and also just... To make it clear, like, if you just have, like, packed and pill oriented questions, like, that's totally cool, too. Like, we will answer stuff. We're excited. As long as it's not, like, spoilery for Malia. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, well, thanks for listening, everyone. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast, please subscribe, share it with your friends, and leave a rating and review. If you'd like to support Wild Bo as he continues to write fantastic stories, go to patreon.com slash wildbo. You can follow the pod on Twitter at Pale Comparison or send us an email at paleincomparisonpod at gmail.com. Keep an eye out for our Reddit thread in r slash parahumans where you can ask us some questions for this week and share your thoughts on this episode. You can also tweet those questions at us or email those questions to us, whatever you'd like. In addition, if you'd like to see all of my predictions laid out, check out our episode description for a link to a prediction tracker. All right. um, Fun fact for this week. I feel like you guys will appreciate this. So a chef's toque contains 100 folds, which is a lot of folds for a hat. I feel like I'm pretty sure I said that right. If not, I will find out. I can't breathe. (laughs) Bye. Bye.